Hello, bonjour, bienvenidos, benvenuti, welcome to the Music Polyglot channel. Today we're looking at Light Shower by Melanie Martinez and we're going to look at this exactly as it sounds on the record. Let's do that in a close-up. So let's begin by talking about the intro. Let me play it once so that you can see what's going on. One, two, three, four. Okay, as you can probably tell, the uh, chords are pretty simple, so let's go through them first. Chord number one is an F major, and we really only need the triad. You can see the diagram for it here. Then we move on to an E major. Then a C. Back to an E major and then an A minor. Then we have a D7, then F. On this change to the F from the D7, notice how your index doesn't need to go anywhere, so try to keep it there on the second string and use it as an anchor, as a pivot point from the D7 to the F. Then we have an E, and then A minor to end the intro. We're finger picking and we really are only going to be using our thumb. I'm talking about your picking hand, the right hand in most cases. So we're going to be using mainly the thumb, the index and the middle finger to pick. And what we're doing is we're going up. Um, let's take the F major triad as an example. We start from the bass note in this case, so that is the fourth string. So your thumb will be playing all the lowest notes in the chord. And in this case, we start on the fourth string. Then the index plays the third string. Then your middle finger plays the second. Right, so we're going up an ascending figure. And after those three notes, we drop back to the index on the third string. So this is thumb, index, middle, index. And this is the picking pattern. Thumb, index, middle, index. That's what happens on chord number one, that's the F major. On chord number two, the E major, we're picking in exactly the same, with exactly the same pattern. But we're only picking the three strings where we have fingers on the left hand. That is the fifth, fourth and third. So we're actually not picking the bass note, the low E on this one. We start on the fifth string with the thumb. On the C we do pick the bass note, which is on the fifth, fourth, third, same pattern. Then back to the E, same as before. And then we play an A minor. On the A minor, we are picking the bass note, open A, then the fourth and third. And notice how even though we're actually fretting a full A minor, we're not actually playing the second string. But in case it rings out, it's better and easier to just move down from an E down to the A minor as a whole shape. It's also, you know, the same shape down a string, so it does make sense. Then we have that D7 which we change the picking pattern on to make it thumb and then ring finger. So this is the first time our ring finger is going to get involved and the ring finger is going to be playing the first string. So we play, just pick those two strings. And then we have that triplet where we pick with a thumb the middle finger on the B string, second string, and again the ring finger on the top E string and we pick those three at the same time three times. And then we move on to the F and we have the same pattern of two fingers at the same time. First bass note and index in this case. Then we complete the shape adding the middle finger on the B string 
right? And we pick those three at the same time. Then we move on to the E, and it's going to be the same pattern as on the F, so thumb and index first. And then we add the middle finger to complete the shape and play three times on that triplet. And on the A minor, we play thumb, index and middle at the same time. In terms of the rhythm, on the first part we're only picking eighth notes, so all your notes should be the same length. There. Right, so this is one and two and three and four. And on the A minor, after the index, we let that note ring out for the duration of the rest of the bar, which is two beats. So on that A minor, we're going to have one and two and three, four, before we move on to that D7. Now here is where the main kind of rhythm difficulty may arise because we have a triplet. We don't need to overthink this at this stage. Now obviously if you want to go into detail on this, you can always contact me to get a free lesson on this uh, on my website. But essentially the way, the best way to think about it is that first you have that held um, first note, which in the case of the D7 is just the thumb and the uh, ring finger together. We're going to hold that for two beats. One, two, and then we play the thumb, middle and ring finger together three times in the remaining two beats that we have left. So three triplet, one, two, three triplet, one, two, three triplet, one, two, three, four. And then we go on to the verse. The verse really is just um, a fragment of the uh, intro. So we have the F, E, C, E, and on the A minor, we hold that third note. And then we hold the D7 on the following bar. So again, all, uh, with the rhythm so that you can see how long things are. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Cool, as simple as that. And you repeat that um, to, uh, yes, at least twice before you move on to the chorus section. Let's have a look at that. Hey, so how's it going so far? If you'd like to go into detail about those triplets or whatever else about the song that you might find a bit more tricky, you can get a free one-on-one -on -one lesson with me on this song by contacting me through my website to which I'll leave a link in the description below. In the choruses, the sequence is very, very similar, but the rhythm changes. Let me play it for you once so that you can see what's going on. One, two, three. So on the first bar, we still have an F major, but instead of it only being two beats in length, we actually keep it for the whole bar. So this becomes the pattern that we know, thumb, index, middle, index, and then we have a thumb index at the end on the fourth beat. So one and two and three, four and, and the same thing on the E, one and two and three, four and. Okay, so we let those two chords last for a whole bar instead of half a bar as it was in the uh, verse. Then we move on to the C and E and A minor and up to the A minor it's all the same as it was before, i.e. just two beats on each chord. One and two and three and four and one and two and three. And that's a little bit of a change because in the, because in the verse we had the A minor ringing out Whereas here we go straight to the D7 triplet. One and two and three triplet. 
Cool. And then we move on to the F, which we let ring out after the third note. One and two, three, four. Same thing on the E. One and two, three, four. Same thing on the A. One and two, A minor, three. And again, in the chorus, that sequence will repeat. There are tiny little variations uh, sometimes here and there, you know. It's mainly going to be playing more as the song develops. But the chords and the rhythms are, are, pretty much, are pretty much the same. You can experiment by playing more, by picking extra notes when you feel that you need them. Let's move on and have a look at that bridge. So the bridge is that instrumental section that we hear in the second half of the song. You know, by definition, a bridge comes after the second chorus, and this is no exception. The sequence is actually exactly the same as it's been so far. Again, the rhythm, though, is a little bit different. So let's hear that. I'll play you the whole bridge, and I'll play you the ending as well, so we can hear all of that together and how that works in terms of the, the timing in terms of the different rhythms. So here we go from the bridge. One, two, three, four. Okay, so you've probably recognized all of that. At the beginning of that bridge, we have the same sequence as we did in the verse. Right, so the F to the E, one and two and two, three. The held A minor, and then the D7. The only difference between this and the verse is that on the verse, you hold that D7 for a full bar of four, whereas here, we need to play the D7 triplet, one triplet, and immediately after move on to the next chord, which makes that bar shorter. It's only two beats instead of four. But if you think about playing the triplet, one triplet, those three notes of even length in uh, that bar, you'll probably get very, very close to that. And then we move on to the F, where we play this rhythm that we've seen the intro right which is that minim or half note and then the triplet hey don't forget that if you want tabs or sheet music for this tune all of that not only to this song but to every song on the channel all of that is available to my patreons on my patreon page so check out the description below so we have one two three triplet one two three triplet one triplet three triplet one triplet right so we have that whole sequence pretty much going on with that minim plus triplet on the f the triplet e major then the triplet c we're playing on that C, we play thumb and index first. And then you play this descending middle index on the second and third triplet. Instead of playing the whole thing three times, you split it up into thumb and index and then middle index. This is a tiny little detail really, you know, so this is really if you want to get close to what we hear on the record, this is what you should do. But if you play the triplet just as you did before, that's definitely going to work, especially if you are singing as well. You may not uh, want to be focusing too much on the details on the guitar. Um, but if you do want to focus on the details, then this is how it goes, right? So thumb index, 
then mil index, same thing on the E. Same thing on the A minor. And then we have this little flick on the open B to hammer on with the index on the first fret. Then you play the second fret of that third string and then the D string, right? So that's pretty simple. Then we land on that D7. One, two, three, triplet. And then we have a normal sequence like we did in the choruses. D7 triplet. And the ending, we let those chords ring out for a full bar. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And if you want to play exactly the way it sounds on the record, then you would actually focus on getting just the thumb and the index together at the end of that to kind of bring it back down to rest. And that is how that goes. So there we have it. I hope that was useful. If it was, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel so you're here when more videos come up. Thank you for staying till the end and I'll see you next time. Hasta la próxima. Arrivederci. Au revoir.